Francisco Bustamante from the Philippines is a living legend, and he's back to defend his World Pool Masters title. His biggest threat, fellow countryman Efren Reyes, the newly crowned World Professional Pool Champion. From the USA, Moscone Cup star Johnny the Scorpion Archer. The European number one, that's Ralph Suke from Germany. From the world of snooker, Jimmy White, the whirlwind. And the man they're now calling Romford Slim, another snooker legend, Steve Davis. This is how they line up. It's the USA versus England coming up as Archer faces Lee Tucker. The defending champion faces Lely of the Netherlands. The Japanese number one and 1998 WPA world champion is up against new German talent Christy Reimering. And fellow German Ortmann takes on the UK number two, Steve Knight. In the bottom half of the draw, it's Davis against the Disher, UK number one, Tommy Donlan. The whirlwind looking to blow away the Polish champion, Tony Drago of Malta, another snooker star, while the new pro world champion, Reyes, faces UK number four, Daryl Peach. We're east of London in Essex at Lakeside Shopping Centre, a futuristic arena for this star-studded international nine-ball event. Your host for the Virgin Interactive World Pool Masters is Mark Johnston Allen. Hello and welcome to the Virgin Interactive World Pool Masters here at the Lakeside Shopping Centre in Essex. Yes, we've invited 16 of the world's best players to compete in this £24,000 event. But not only have we invited players from the world of pool, but also from the world of snooker. Tony Drago, Steve Davis and Jimmy White all chance in there, I'm hoping, to beat the pool players at their own game. Well, it's a straight 60-man knockout event. It's the first player to nine max that goes through to the next round. Let's not keep our two players waiting any longer. Ladies and gentlemen, from the United States of America, he's a former four-time world champion, a four-time player of the year, Johnny Archer. And Johnny's opponent from West Ham in the UK, Lee Tucker. Well, he was a 1997 European champion, a former UK number one, Lee Tucker. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Johnny Archer and Lee Tucker. Johnny, you weren't here last year. Were you, is this kind of situation a little bit different for you? I would think so. A little bit different than what we're used to in the States. Will it take some getting used to? I hope not. Now I won't have too much time. Now, I said on the intro, you're, you're four-time former world champion, you're four-time player of the year. You're one of the favourites to win this title. How's your form at the moment? Well, I think I'm playing pretty well. I've been playing pretty well all year, so uh, hopefully I do, do well. Give us a tip. I know your hobby's investments. What will you do with the money if you win it? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I guess uh, might uh, buy, might buy, try to buy a new car or something. We wish you all the best. Now, Lee, you were here last year, weren't you? Yeah. I've been here for the last couple of years, yeah. Now, how do you feel? You're playing, as I said, one of the tournament's favourites. You know, the pressure, is it on Johnny or is it on you? Um, people say probably Johnny because they say I've got nothing to lose, but if you play well, you got them confident. You got some support with you today? Yeah, I've got my family here, my children and my father. Well, we wish you the very best. Johnny Archer and Lee Tucker, ladies and gentlemen. Your commentary team for this opening match, Ralph Suke and Sid Waddell. Good game, Johnny. Unique auditorium, Lakeside, down in Essex. What's become a big, big 
uh, tradition. Play in pool, it's hard enough to concentrate on pool and down some smoky hall or wherever you play. But uh, playing it in front of a shopping audience with all chicken in the bags and the, the week's potatoes in, the, in their carrier bags, a bit focused. And uh, Johnny Arch, obviously one of the favourites. With me, co-commentator Rolf Suke, who's also one of the favourites. Now this should be a walkaway role for Johnny Archer okay, on the ready? cards. Well, on the paper it looks like an easy match for Johnny Archer, but actually it, it's not like that because uh, in a race to nine, playing in a different uh, situation like here, it's always hard. Lee Tucker to win the lag. So that's the lag, that's the way to start. Some people toss a coin to see who breaks the pack. Uh, in this, the tradition is the lag. Race to nine. The length of the table, man nearest the bottom, Kush wins. Now here, very important part of the game. It's nine ball pool, you have to break that pack with immense power, but control of the white. <coughs> he made a uh, ball, how is he sitting on the blue two? Well, actually it looks pretty good after the first break. There's a nice coming in on the two ball and I think that's very comfortable for the first game. Came it's off not, the cush. It's not an easy one, but uh, he, he might could finish the first game and that makes a player always, especially in the first match of a tournament, feels more comfortable. So here he is, takes the orange five into the middle. Uh, he's played it with bottom, so that means he's thinking of taking it back and taking the green again in the middle. He's got a, he's got a possible plant, brown seven to nine. Ralph, yeah, what are you thinking he, about that? If he can get a good position on the seven, he probably is going to play the combination seven into nine and wins the first so game. So look out in this game, it can be over very quickly. You have to hit the low ball first, in this case the seven, but if the nine goes down, he's one rack up. So this looks like a good opening start from Lee Tucker, yeah. yeah. Lee yeah, brilliant first rack here for Lee. That makes him look very confident for the for the whole match. And I think it's going to be probably a tight match for the for the whole thing. If you can see here the combination again. Great shot. The second rack, Lee Tucker to break. So here we go, winner breaks, and uh, if Lee Tucker gets uh, two or three Foul. Um, together, it's a race to nine. Yeah, it was a little unlucky here on the break. He scratched on the break that gives Johnny Archer ball in hand. He can put the cue ball anywhere on the table where he wants to and gives him the opportunity to win the second game of the match. If you scratch, that's in off or foul. The opponent can replace, the very important part of this game, the opponent can replace the ball where he likes on the table, not as an eight ball behind the white line. So a, it's fatal to make a mistake at this level, Rolf, to go in off or to foul. Well, I mean, it was a little unfortunately for Lee to scratch on a break, but with ball in hand on this high, last, uh, high class level, it should have been a problem for Johnny Archer to clear this rack here. And if some of you play all over Britain opening holes like this, I particularly play in two holes in Leeds and in a place called the Elbow Room, the pink uh, can be a purple in most packs, but the pink specially modified for TV because the purple looked like the brown in case it looked like the red which left us all confused. Archer stepping in here, four times world champion, a Georgia boy, talks like molasses, running off a syrup spoon, and Lee knows that this kid could run out the game from here, and I'm talking run the game. This kid is incredible. From the age of uh, 14, he used to cycle six miles to the pool room and six miles back. That's, that's quite a lot. I mean, I used to cycle when I was young, but I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> so. Anyway, he ran the second rack here and tied, tied the whole thing up, one each. So the numbers, as you see on the carpet, the uh, yellow one solid to the nine strike. Object of the game to sink the balls in order, or if you see a plant or a cannon, 
Take it quick. At the World Championships in Cardiff last July, uh, Archer did not show his true form. Yeah. Any any Just thoughts on that, Ralph? Why he didn't come good there? Well, actually, we, actually, I thought Johnny he played pretty good. He played uh, the Chinese player Chang, and he was up leading five to one, and he didn't get any more chances to actually show his form. Well, that's the cutthroat nature of the game. And see, Ralph Suki is one of the favourites for this. Uh, I would say that Archer is. The, one of the favourites, we have also the holder, Francisco Bustamante, to play. And the one and only Efren Reyes, who is the reigning world champion. So you're watching the creme de la milk here in Essex playing pool. Oh, safety. Yeah, you played a pretty good safety here. I was thinking of uh, making the one ball first, but then he decided to play a safety because it was a little too risky. So this has got no lap on this cloth. This ball oh. could go anywhere, but he's scratched. Oh, and Johnny Archer. So this rack is over. It's a race to nine racks. And Lee, who uh, plays regularly at WT's club in Cambridge, where he's resident now, just having no luck at the moment. Yeah, well, he, he hit it pretty good. He just got a little unlucky again here to scratch it. And now it's like almost a roadmap for Johnny Archer to run the second rack here to get his first lead in the whole match and from the land of the free where in 1828 uh, the president was accused of encouraging gambling by having a pool table in the white house whatever next <laughs> well i don't know if there's a pool table in the white house but <laughs> I've, there might have been one somewhere yeah the american people are very puritanical in certain ways and i think the game has suffered from that image is it like that in germany there's when you say I'm a pool player, the people raise their eyebrows? No, not like that. I mean, the, the sport is pretty popular in Germany, but compared to the United States, even now here yeah, in England, Johnny it's not that popular. Johnny Archer just won the third game of the match. Well, everybody making a spectacle of themselves. As the four times world champion takes advantage of two mistakes by Tucker. weekend on the English Premier League. And it's a great ball! Oh, wonderful goal! Five! That's absolutely brilliant. Right on the stroke of half-time. All the action kicks off this Saturday at midnight. League leaders, Leeds United are back at Elland Road as the East London outfit West Ham come calling. Oh, what a stunning stroke! Leeds are firing as they aim for top honours, but Redknapp's ready to strike while his irons are hot. Monday morning, Gordon Strachan's Coventry face a crucial game against New Boys Watford. Graham Taylor's Hornets, still fighting their feet in the Premiership, had their work cut out at Highfield Road as they take on the Sky Blues. Tuesday morning, for a Liverpool side facing the inexperienced... Welcome back to the Lakeside Shopping Centre, where Lee Tucker of the UK leads Johnny Archer of the USA by three racks to two. Rack six, Lee Tucker to break. Ready the break, Ralph? That was a very good break here. He probably has a little trouble playing the two ball now. He might play it off the three in the side. No, I think he can just play it in the side and play the three in the same pocket. And the simple 90 degree stun uh, shot, which you ought to master on the middle pocket if you're going to practice this. Stun shot, the most easily available, to particularly to work the middle pockets. Uh, playing this with a lot of left hand side and bottom to augment the angle backward off the cush, augments the natural angle. Bit yeah. straight on this, Ralph, maybe? Yeah, just draw it a little back, get a natural angle on the on the seven ball, then get a bring the cue ball right in the middle of the table, then play the eight and play the nine in the same corner. So that shouldn't. And be I'll stress, it's a race to nine. This is the first round match, and the four times world champion looks like going four two down to a rampant lead took out of England.
and he will just tag it into the rail and leave himself an absolute dolly line for 4 2. So we could be in for some fun in games. Yes, Tucker goes 4 2 up against the four times world champion. Well, said he was the archer, a weather man of words, but he could be shot down like the high flying bird by Lee Tucker here, who's on a roll. He's getting one off the break usually. And took well, uh, that's ball one that's going beautifully into the middle from the break, Rob. Yeah, that was another nice break here, and even the position of the two is, is nice and easy here. So that, that looks like. Lee can put a little pressure on Johnny here because being 4-2 down, maybe 5-2 after this one here. That that could be not the end yet, but I mean a race to nine sometimes is short, but sometimes is even long. And a slight uh, little glow in my co-commentator's voice because if Archer goes out, that's one less eagle to fly, isn't it, Rob? Yeah, you're right, but I mean, uh, he's in my bracket, so that. That uh, means that I might could meet him in the semifinals, but first I have to win my matches. So and Tucker looking uh, mean. His uh, four kids are in the audience watching. You see, it's uh, I hate to say this, I'll probably get nailed to the wall. It's not like a snooker shot. It's uh, the use of the queue is nowhere near flowing sometimes, especially when you see Reyes and bust the money. Yeah, right, so this queue is used like a. Well, that's right. cross I between mean, a javelin and a sword. The, the way, the, especially the Filipinos, aiming is unbelievable. It's, it's, you can't compare with any other American or European player because they aim in completely uh, next to the ball, actually. Is that a 50-50 shot? Was that uh, half safety in mind, maybe? No, no, no. That was uh, an offensive shot. She just missed it. That happens. He's looked uh, straight line. Yeah. No, he left him quite an easy shot here, yeah. and so that's the chance for Johnny to come in back into the match. And remember, winner breaks. So these guys at the World Championships in Cardiff last July, there was guys sometimes 8-1 down being beat by a run of 7 or 8. It can happen. Well, it happened to me actually in the, in the last 16. Sorry, I didn't mean to raise that <laughs> quite so specifically. How far were you up in that match? How did you pull back? Well, I was I was Under leading 7-3 against Reyes and Reyes never got back to the table. He ran the whole set, he ran eight breaks in a row yeah, well to put me out of the tournament. And after that he won the World Championships. Uh, could have been me. Oh, I know what you mean, yeah. Well, dig this beat from this crazy band. Come on, everybody, let's clap our hands. Here we go then, Jan Verhaas, one of our two referees, the other one's Michaela Tab, Scottish ace, eight ball player, uh, racking them up. The rack has to be frozen, prayers will yeah, occasionally yeah. question the racking. The eighth rack, Johnny Archer to break. And just watch, uh, particularly the wing ball going to the middle. Well, he made a ball on a break here. He hit the one ball pretty good. And watch the nine ball go in. Push. Go into the right corner pocket here. He just missed it by an inch or two. But he doesn't could have a could shot be here. very on ominous one. for Tucker that the Archer's break is developing the nine so much. Game could hinge on what happens in this particular rack. Uh, took a four in the race to nine to Archer's three. 
Let's see, that, that looks like a two option shot here. He could either bank the one into the nine, which means he has to hit the, r hit the one, hit the rail first, then by the six there and try to make the nine. But it's, it's quite a risky shot here. Or you can just cut it in the left upper corner. And try to I don't get think he's going for the cut. It seems to be addressing the other side of the... Oh, he did. Well, it was a two-way shot. He, he missed it there and left Johnny Archer's safety here. So he has to kick at the one ball. And that's kick, always kick hard being a shots. technical phrase for using the cushion first. So perfectly controlled shot this will be into the top rail. As you look at the right. And he was thinking about the nine. He was thinking of getting that nine in. Well, he might thought about it, but I don't know. He tried to hit it and left him a, a hard shot. And it worked out pretty good. Left Lee. Pretty sure you have the nine in mind. All right, there was a 50-50, if not a 33-33-33 shot. Uh, could have let Lee. Took it gets to 5-3. We could really see some tense pull. That was a little unlucky here. If he would pass the side pocket and bring the one ball to the to the end rail, he would have hooked him and played a good resave. So this one ball in the side shouldn't be that hard. The only thing is he has to get position for the two, which is right in the middle of the table. Good shot. Played with see to use that much pace there to get the position well, would risk to an average player a bubble on the hole. But well, I think by these guys. In, in that case he had to because he was almost straight so he had to hit it that hard to get enough speed to the cue ball. So from here it shouldn't be that hard. The four is it's not that hard after the three here. Then you get a straight in six yeah. into the right side. Played that with a bit of uh, top and left hand English yeah, to right. open it out to run inside as we call it. They're always looking when they use the cushion to either alter the angle wider or narrower. So there's ups and downs this game. And how? Yeah, that's nine ball. There are many other games where you are in a big lead and it's hard to catch you, but in nine ball you can lead by seven, eight games and still lose the whole match. That's what makes the game actually so interesting. And so fascinating. Yeah, you need oil in the elbow and ice in the mind. Archer pulls Rack it back Johnny Archer. to four apiece. Enters the semi finals this weekend on Fox Sports 2. 6 a.m. Sunday morning. After De Beer kicked the English off the park, the Wallabies face their toughest test so far as they go head to head with the Springboks. Then, 145. He's the Scorpion, but he's a very nice guy, nice, well mannered Georgia boy, and a real gentleman till he gets to the Blue Bays. Four times world champion and a protege to some extent of the great Earl of Pearl Strickland. Four racks each. Ninth rack. Yeah, with this record, Johnny he Arthur. might have been uh, a player for the decade, actually, for the 90s. So if, if there is an election for a player of the decade, he might have been one to choose. Nice break here. But I think he has no shots because he's hooked. He can't see the three ball. Hook the uh, Germanic or indeed American for Snooker. This game full of the amazing slang, different words. The bank shot is what we call a double here. Uh, hook is a Snooker. And I think the only, the only common phrase is the stun, which is to bang the ball in until it goes at 90 degrees. English is American and <laughs> yeah, you're right. Top and bottom are following draw. 
See, he made four balls in a break here and can see the, the three ball, which is the lowest ball on the table right now. Yes. So he's thinking of using or playing a jump shot here. Right then. Because there is no good option to play any... I think he's kicking, right? Oh. No, he's playing a push out here because he just asked the referee if he can use a jump cue, which is the shorter cue to, to jump the ball. And he said... Well, he seemed, uh, we think, and well, we've got Michaela Tab with us, he seemed to ask if he could use the jump cue, a small one, and maybe he couldn't. So he elected to push out, push out, a challenge shot. It's not a snooker shot, it's have a go at this, you've got a half a chance. There, there was a great kick shot here. He, he snookered him, he brought the cue ball to one side of the table and the object ball to the other side and left one object ball right in between. So now Lee Tucker probably is going to jump this ball. 4-4. Four, four. Anybody's game, it's a race to nine. Either play capable of stringing three or four together or more. So is this a jump or a swerve, Ralph? Or a mixture? It's a jump. Yeah, he's going to jump it. Oh, oh, lucky. He got the line right, but just hit the knuckle. Thanks. Yeah, he just hit the edge All of the pocket just a little bit. So he, the ball jumps off the table and... Gives Johnny Archer a ball in hand with four balls left on the table. That's that's like a hanger for him now. Well, the best jump shots I've seen hit the ball on the first or second bounce, so it has a volley effect there. It, he hit it just after the half volley, so it bounced. It just hit it a little too hard. If you would hit it a little softer, it would have gone in and gave him the opportunity to get the lead again. But now it's Johnny Archer's Johnny Archer to, to win the ninth game and get the lead again, 5-4. Yeah, as Ralph said, that uh, I would say that in the 80s, Strickland was probably the player of the 80s, uh, would you and say? Back. And this kid, the player of the 90s, doing well in Essex. Coming back, Johnny Archer to break, leading 5-4 to four, and having the chance to bring this first match into Ten his track. record to Johnny get Arsene. through into the second round. And the holders of this title, a uh, really top-class bunch, but the man is the holder and the great old Strickland won it two years ago. Uh, and this is a field that includes a great Efren Reyes Bata, Efren Reyes Jr., the reigning world champion. Steve Davis and Jimmy White and no mean hands at this either. They're coming up in future weeks. And also Ralph Suke. Yeah, I'm gonna play in this tournament. Gonna take a while when I'm gonna play, but that's the reason why I'm sitting here next to you, Sid. If I could play, I wouldn't be here. Rolls the blue in, just runs on. The pink is well, you shot. It's got a natural angle to come uh, about the white will land about foot foot maybe lower on the table to take the green six into the middle yeah johnny is getting more confidence here i can see it and even feel it he's playing softer and uh, if he can continue playing like this he might he's going to finish not not the whole match probably but I think there are not too many chances for, for Lee coming back to the table because he's looking very good right now. Elton said rolling like thunder, but controlled thunder in the case of this game. The balls are much bigger than snooker balls. Oh, and goal. Archer in a roll at the moment, taking the 6 ball.
Here we go then, an old fashioned look, as my mother would have put it, on the face of Lee Tucker. He led this game 4 2 at one stage, but he's up against the four times world champion. And it's a bit like. There was another. Leaving a packet of sweets on the mantelpiece when Dennis the Menace is in your house. There was another good and successful break for Johnny Archer. Made a ball on the break. Had a nice position on the one, as you can see here. He made the seven in the corner. The cue ball get a lucky kick. So you get a, even a better position for the one ball here. And he's now moving around the table as if he was on casters. As Ralph said, there was early nerves when they both run about 3-3. Three, three. They were each missed a very easy shot into the middle. But now Archer is rolling. Well, that wasn't the, the way he wanted to go with the cue ball. But still he has a pretty fair chance to make the three ball in the, in the corner. The only hard thing is he needs to bring the cue ball to the right cushion and back to the middle of the table to get positioned for the pink four ball. And if he can do that, this game should be over. So how does he maneuver the white to position on the pink roll? Just play it center with a hard shot with a little left hand English as he did here. It was and he checks the angle off the cushion. Yep. Yeah, it was just a little too soft. He wanted to get a little more straight in on the four. But you can still cut it into the left corner here. And you need to kill the cue ball to get position on the five. He might play with inside English. That means from, from this point of view, left hand English to kill the cue ball or just draw it with right low English. Oh, he overcut it. Unbelievable. Right. Uh, as you say, that's what happens. It, it, three inches out of position, and you're forced to make a feather cut that's less than 10% hits. And that's what can happen. You dolly it up for the opponent. Remember, when I breaks. But he left. The sort of chance he's going to take. Roll uh, Tucker. Yeah, but he left Lee no shot here. He snookered again. And he has to play either a Massé shot to hit the four or maybe jump, but then I think you have to jump over the six and over the eight, which is very, very hard to do. So you might either Massé it or hit the rail first, try to kick at the four. Massé is the application of extreme English stabbing down on the pole, and watch this, he'll probably hit the cushion first. Brilliant shot. That was a really, really great shot, yeah. And perfect position as well. Eat your heart out, Isaac Newton. As neat as a pippin on the bounce, that. Well, he needs to get position for the eight ball here, which can't pass the nine ball down here, so that means he's going to play it either in the same side pocket. Yeah, he's playing for the same side. Well, this could be the turnout. If he pulls back to 6-5, say, getting on a roll of four is no trouble at all with these kind of boys. Say, so Rolf remembers being the right. <laughs> He's back by an eight run. And of course, the great second won a million bucks with a ten run. The game hosts a uh, great number of great names. You might remember Paul Newman as Fast Eddie. But not a lot of people know that's how double, great Act WC Fields started out in Lee Minnesota Tucker as a rack boy when he was 13 with a mean cue. He didn't make a ball on the break here. And gives Johnny Archer the opportunity to win this game again. He really needed, he pulled back to 6-5. He needed to make a ball off the break. And they came in to buy the frozen turkey and they're still here. Turkey's in a pool in the carrier bag. Such the attention paid here in this unique setting. 
Or like snooker, you couldn't play snooker off in this kind of atmosphere, could you? With people around? Well, I don't know. I've, I'm, I'm not a snooker player at all, and I've never been to a snooker event live. They're very, very quiet. It's like going to church. Is it really? Well, I don't, I don't like it if it's too quiet. I like more atmosphere like we do in to have in pool tournaments. It's just more fun, so the people get excited, and that's that's another great thing about the sport. A straight stun shot, that's moving the ball at 90 degrees. Simplest shot to play because you don't really need any side. If you add a bit of side, uh, you can move it to an angle that you require. Archer shouldn't have been given this chance. Lee, what, what happened with this break there? Let's go back to the break. Did he give it enough power? It seems sla slack well, break. From my point of view, it looked like that he hit the one ball not right in the center. He just hit it a little bit too much to the left side. That made the cue ball go to the left side as well. He almost scratched in the side. And therefore, he didn't bring enough power onto the balls. And therefore, he didn't make a ball on the break. Uh, next week, we'll see the break of Francisco Bustamani, which has been timed in Vegas about five years ago at 43 miles an hour. Yeah, Bustamani probably has the hardest break on the whole pool circuit. And if he, if he keeps hitting the one ball firm, he's very, very hard to beat because of his break. That's probably like 40 or 50% of his whole game. So the game's exactly like tennis. You've got to hold on to your serve. <laughs> this end for 7-5 to Archer. Gifted by that slack break by Tucker. The well, 7-5 to one of the favourites. Coming back, leading Archer, 7-5, went breaking, let's see if he, if he can make a ball on the break here. Johnny Archer to break. Now this is a combination of, see that uh, back arm stabs, the, it's, it's anything but a smooth action, it's a sort of half caber toss, half javelin. But you need the power to break the balls, the main thing is to, is to keep control of the whites, look at this. Look at the body power that goes into the shot. Yeah, but I think he didn't break so hard this time. That might be the reason that he didn't make a ball on the break. And gives Lee the opportunity to get back into the match. Well, we'll have a crack of a game, Rolf, if uh, Lee could uh, pull this one out, pull about a 7-6. And he's quite capable of running the three to win. It's only a race to nine. You, the pros, well, you top guys don't really like a short race, do you? Yeah, well, I mean, we, we like race to 15 and even more. So the, the better player mostly wins those long races. But Class in a race will come out, yeah? Yeah, but in a race to nine, I mean, you can almost lose to everybody. <laughs> Intermediate shot here then. Red to orange, you're allowed to play this shot. As long as you hit the low ball, red on orange counts. Um, so you have to hit the low ball if you're just tuning into this. You have to hit the low ball, in that case, the red three. But you can bat in any ball you like. If that had been the nine, you'd have won. Exactly right. Well, he's got a little problem here, having a six close to the side pocket. And he needs to get a good position on the four ball, which is the pink, right in the middle of the table. If he gets it straight in, he can play. He could have played a six. Well, this the he needed... Well, maybe he should have played that slower, Ralph. Was that the idea? Give himself more angle into the green? Well, I, I thought he had to hit it a little harder to get a straight in four into the, into the corner. So therefore, but he's, he's good now here. He can play the six in the... Nice in the use of side there to give him the angle. Now, this would not go on a snooker table or a eight ball pool table. But if he can afford the green to go into the rail, anything from 18 inches from the pocket, it will hold the rail. Plays it nice and soft, but I think he doesn't have enough angle on this on the seven here. It's it's going to be a hard shot here. It's not an easy one. Ooh, I but he might have fluked the snooker. 
Well, I think he got a little lucky here because he was going to make the seven in the side and get position for the eight. But he got a little lucky, so let's see if Johnny is going to kick this ball in or will leave Lee another safety here. Left hand cushion in the other pocket, bit of right English, maybe? Well, I don't know if he has, I don't think that he has to use right English, just hit the rail, maybe play a little uh, below the center of the queue ball and try to make it, just hit it firmly. Not a bad leave though. Yeah, that, that was a pretty good shot here. I don't think that he won, wanted to leave the ball over there because he hit the seven ball just a little too thin, but the way it came out is, is pretty good. Well, there's <laughs> There is very little uh, hiding place here. Very little hiding place. So I think, does it have to be an aggressive shot, Ralph? Well, he might bang it into the corner where he's standing right now. He hit it too thick. And that's what happens when it does hit the cushion. It, on a normal eight ball or a snooker table, the ball will accept the incoming angle twice. On this, it straightens. You got one chance at the bank and then the ball straightens. Yeah, because he uses right hand English that makes after the second rail contact makes the ball spin the other way around. But still this is not an easy seven ball here played in the, in the right hand corner. Brilliant shot and good position on the eight ball which is hanging in the pocket. That's so this could put Archer one rack away from the match check side to come out straight as you'd like for the nine to put him one rack away from the match and the rack to Johnny Archer <laughs> Fabio Petroni, who famously shed tears with pride when he walked onto the stage at the York Hall to represent Johnny Europe Archer with Steve back. Davis. Then he got a grip. Ralph was in the same team. He really did come back well from that emotional overcoming. Yeah, well, he since the Moscone Cup, he improved his game a lot. I mean, he played good at the Moscone Cup, but still was in some situations a little too nervous, a little too... too... I don't even know how to say it in English. Angst. <laughs> I think you've been angst. Uh, one of your words, kid. Anyway, here's uh, Archer prowling the table called the Scorpion. Uh, might be seeing the sting come out uh, at the end of the tail here. Uh, no dummies in this tournament. If Archer striking here, Ralph, uh, any problem, Paul? Yeah, the three ball, actually, because there's no no way to, to play the, the three ball straight in somewhere, so he probably is going to bang it now into the cross corner. What, quarter ball hit, maybe less? Is yeah. Less than a quarter ball? No, it's like, it's like a quarter ball, maybe a little more even than a quarter. 40% hit needed on this. The, this. He's trying to bring it back to where he's standing, middle and back. Draw the cue ball back with low left English to bring it down the rail to get position on the pink four. That was a great shot here. Perfect position on the four. I think he's, he's got enough angle to draw it back to get position on the six to play the six in the same corner. So he's applying bottom spin. Takes it into the cushion with a bit of augmented side. Urban's the angle out to leave himself just the angle to take the cue ball where he wants. Well, he's going for the match. Three balls left on the table. And it shouldn't be that hard for him to make those three balls. Yes, yeah, some Georgia people drink a homer from a wooden cup. 
he'll probably celebrate with a glass of root beer drawing it back a foot game shot on now well, he took a he got the foot to up but the four-time world champion back in the match Johnny Archer keeps laying the seat so Johnny Archer well done, the four times world That's champion great. one of the three or four favorites for this a title held by Buster Manti in the frame Yeah. 